Sculpting is a method of modeling that is somewhere between object and edit mode. As you sculpt, you affect the mesh destructively, but you're not viewing your vertices, edges, and faces. It's more recommended to have a higher poly count when sculpting so that you can create some smooth effects with your brush set. Now, while technically you can sculpt using a mouse, it is highly recommended that you use some sort of drawing tablet or display. For this lesson, I'm going to be using my Wacom Intuos here. The nature of most stylus pens means that enabling emulate three button mouse in your preferences is recommended. This means that by holding down the Alt key, then pressing down with your pen will allow you to rotate your view. If you hold down Shift and Alt, you can pan, and holding down Control and Alt will allow you to zoom your view. We can access Sculpt Mode from a general preset by going to the Sculpting Workspace, and this will set the default cube into Sculpt Mode so that you can begin. I'm going to go up to my Overlays and enable Statistics and Wireframe, but I'm going to set the opacity for Wireframe to about 0.5, so it's not really stark. You can see how this cube has a very low poly count, just eight vertices and six faces. So if we begin to sculpt with whatever brush is available at the moment, not a lot is going to happen because the topology is not dense enough to work with. Now we could subdivide this cube. I'll toggle into edit mode, subdivide, and in my last action panel, I'll increase the subdivision as high as it will go. It's about 10. Then I can toggle back into sculpt mode and try again, and you'll see the topology begin to transform. There's an option here called DIN Topo, which is short for dynamic topology. I'm going to undo these steps and enable DIN Topo and do the same thing. Because our wireframe is on, you can see that now sculpting adds to the cube's topology. Be warned that while this can be a lot of fun and you can create a lot more with Dintopo enabled, you can see how quickly the vertex count rises. There are two things to counteract this. Blender now allows you to work with Vulkan as the backend for your interface rendering. You open your preferences, go to System, and under Display Graphics, switch your backend from OpenGL to Vulkan. Now, this won't be necessary for this lesson, but it is something worth knowing and trying. Now, the second thing I mentioned is that you can remesh as you go. Remeshing will redraw your mesh's topology and take all of your new sculpted changes into account. Remember that this is a destructive process, and that means that changes affect your mesh data directly. So have that undo handy as you tinker with the settings. Of course, jumping into sculpting this way is not generally the way that anyone would start. Just like using the 2D animation preset to get going with Grease Pencil, it's far simpler to start with the sculpting preset. So let's go to File, New, and select the sculpting preset from this menu. So you'll see what looks like a sphere, but if we enable the wireframe overlay like we did previously, you'll see that the topology is not like your usual sphere. In fact, it's our default cube in disguise, subdivided and smooth. The reason that this starts with a subdivided and smoothed cube is that for most purposes, this topology is better for sculpting forms than a sphere. Now we're automatically in sculpt mode. The toolbox is visible and it's showing us all of our sculpting tools. Below, there is an asset shelf, which shows a range of sculpt brushes. Now, next to all, there are three subcategories. There's general for mesh transformation, paint for painting textures directly on the surface, and simulation for quickly creating cloth effects on your surface. Now, depending on how you wish to work, you can access any of these brushes from this asset shelf or from the side panel with the N key or from the Tool Properties panel, or from the hotkey Shift Spacebar. If I hit the N key and click on the Tool tab, I can see my brush settings for whatever brush is enabled, and I can adjust these as needed, 
but I'd recommend learning some useful hotkeys to assist with sculpting as you work. I'm going to select the basic draw brush, and then I'm going to move my cursor over our sphere. You'll see that this circle adheres to the face normals of the topology that we're hovering over. If I hit the F key and drag my pen left or right, I can increase or decrease the brush's radius. Shift F will allow you to adjust the strength of the fall off. Most brushes are set to a positive or additive direction in relation to face normals, but holding down control will reverse this. Now you can see where all of these adjustments can be made in the tool shelf as well as the side panel. The tools at your disposal are grouped by similar functions. The top set all work as brushes. The first one is obviously your sculpting brush. The next one is for painting on your surface. Masking and painting face sets are for more advanced workflows. And brushing these areas are very useful for precision work. The next set down deals with specific selections. Just like with edit tools, they can be switched from simple box modes to lasso or even a polyline tool. Filters allow you to apply effects such as cloth simulation, and used in conjunction with masking, you can quickly isolate and apply filters to specific areas of a mesh. Now, the best way to see these tools in action, of course, is to sculpt something. So let's clear all of this mess by going to File, New, and opening a fresh sculpt preset. I'm going to use just a few basic brushes, adjusting my tools as I work using the shortcut keys we just discussed. Take note of the screencast key overlays if you get too lost, but I will describe what I am doing as I go. I want to transform this default mesh into a cartoony monster's head like Melvin's. Let's use the grab tool. I'm going to enable my mesh symmetry up here and deform this into a rough head shape. I'll switch to my draw brush. And holding down control, I can sculpt a couple of depressions here for where I want the eyes to go. I'll hit the F key, scale down my drawing sculpt brush, and hold down control so that I can carve out a line for his mouth. I'll also add in a couple of depressions here where some horns are going to be attached. Now, using a combination of brushes now, I can further sculpt this head to create a smoother surface for the mouth or some furrowed brows. And I might use this crease brush to define the mouth slit here. Note that some brushes such as this one are already in subtract mode by default, so control will flip the function to an additive one in these cases. I'm fairly happy with what I've got so far, so I'm going to toggle into object mode, add a new sphere, scale this down and set it as an eye. I'm going to add a mirror modifier to this and use the head mesh that we previously worked on as the object that will mirror this eyeball. I'm going to duplicate this sphere and I'm going to move it to where I have Melvin's horn. And I'll have to rotate this in edit mode so that the pole is pointing up and sculpt it into a rough conical shape. Kind of like this shape, this might be also good to use as a tooth. So I'm going to duplicate this and reposition it around the mouth. Now it's sitting a little above the lip, but no matter, I want to first duplicate and transform this a few more times to make some more teeth. And when I'm happy with those positions, I'm going to join all of these meshes together, select the head mesh, re enter sculpt mode, and continue to sculpt the areas to make them fit around these new objects. I can sculpt some further features around the eyes, making it look like he's got some bags or some eyelids. The lips could use a bit more filling. The cheeks here could be a little bit more pronounced. And the base areas around the horn should look as though these horns are protruding from the head mesh. Now, I have spent a little time with the sculpting process, but if you had to compare this to mesh modeling, pulling and pushing vertices even with proportional falloff, 
that could have taken a heck of a lot longer, and we've just spent minutes here. Of course, there is so much more to sculpting than what we've covered in this short lesson. I would highly recommend you try out the core fundamentals of sculpting hosted by Kent Trammell. Now you're probably wondering where to from here. Well, we're going to cover that in the final lesson of the Blender Basics course. <laughs>